वेलकम नमस्कार जॉन थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग अहिंसा कॉन्वर्सेशंस इट्स अ प्लेजर मीटिंग यू वंस अगेन एंड आई एम हैप्पी टू बी पार्ट ऑफ दिस कन्वर्सेशन ऑन अहिंसा सो फ्रॉम योर चाइल्डहुड व्हाट वुड बी द अर्लीएस्ट रिकॉलेक्शन यू हैव ऑफ द कांसेप्ट ऑफ अहिंसा i mean the idea the concept of ahimsa was introduced to me much later but uh, there were occasions of uh, its experience that uh, comes across uh, every life in my life too uh, i mean uh, i say this uh, because i read later on uh, from gandhi that uh, uh, human beings are essentially non violent so much of our experience must have been non violent only that uh, we uh, realize it only we understand it conceptually uh, and uh, on that count uh, uh, i had a uh, uh, few uh, behavioral non violent uh, uh, experiences which i cherished in my childhood but more of uh, 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 systemic non violence uh, Uh, that uh, was uh, evident in the life that uh, i had to recollect uh, uh, I, i mean in, uh, even in my family uh, my we my mother was a teacher and uh, my father was uh, ex army person but uh, uh, due to my father's uh, inclination towards agriculture he got into Uh, serious agricultural practices but uh, 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 climate in those days also did not uh, uh, favor him continue and uh, we fell into very severe uh, debt situation uh, all the fortunes we had uh, vanished because of uh, uh, the recurrent losses three consecutive years we lost the crop in 18 acres due to severe rain and uh, all the land gone because uh, the cooperative society in from which uh, my father borrow uh, put a compound interest and uh, uh, they started recovering by all means uh, all the fortunes gone and uh, we were in a very very dire strait that time uh, Uh, i mean we were a very big family a very big family nine children and uh, my parents couldn't uh, manage any of us uh, because uh, i mean the situation was overwhelming my brother that time i mean when we were in a good position my brother the first brother i am the eighth one went into uh, engineering but he couldn't Uh, complete his engineering because uh, my father couldn't pay the fee for the last year that time a neighbor having seen our situation came to pay the fee to my brother the situation was so dire uh, that a person did not have any scope of getting that money back and uh, i found that compassion of neighborhood uh, quite uh, Uh, warming this is there naturally when we connect with the uh, uh, with people uh, non violence unfolds this is something that i uh, i remember uh, that uh, family even now warmly because they rescued us once my father my brother uh, cleared his engineering he went into army he became a com- uh, uh, commanding officer and uh, then he rescued the family so it that the neighbor family rescued our family that is the truth otherwise my brother would have been elsewhere uh, struggling to eke out a life such instances are happening everywhere uh, uh, when uh, when i read gandhi later on i found that uh, uh, ahimsa unfolds from the truth the truth is the the truth realization is that uh, uh, we recognize everything as part of the truth 
uh, in the in the behavioral sense we say we have to love each other we have to be uh, compassionate or we have to uh, be empathetic uh, that will all happen only when we recognize the primacy of the other person the uh, classical example is the mother's mo motherliness the maaki mamta maaki mamta is the uh, highest expression of ahimsa but that happens only in the context of the child the mother when comes out of the house to the street she is just an ordinary woman where does that mamta go it it hasn't gone anywhere but uh, it, it doesn't get uh, the context to uh, come out with the child she thinks that uh, uh, they are integral so recognizing the primacy of the action that is the truth mm. when uh, accomplished mm. our behavior becomes uh, non violent uh, mm. naturally mm. Mm. Uh, and uh, wherever uh, we recognize the primacy of people the behavior becomes non violent how did you get drawn towards this realization because i know this is a consequence of many years of study uh, uh, so how did uh, you get drawn towards a whole life that you're giving to uh, conflict resolution uh, my uh, the the struggle through which we came out uh, i mean today we can uh, say that uh, we were in very uh, severe poverty stricken situation but we never thought that way uh, when uh, my mother was a very confident lady she uh, i never saw her cry uh, uh, i mean helplessly uh, she would uh, leave it to the hands of god and uh, she would uh, do everything uh, one at a time uh, she lived day by day and uh, uh, we i hail from a, a, a christian family my mother belonged to a denomination which was very orthodox very orthodox it uh, had a lot of sacrificial element for the cause of others but uh, they have a lot of limitations as well their limitations is they are very exclusive uh, they they don't uh, recognize otherness their doctrine is parochial uh, uh, which i can say now uh, very parochial because they do not recognize any merit uh, in any other uh, path uh, within their path they were good Uh, but uh, because of parochialism uh, i couldn't uh, stay within that once i got some understanding of society uh, otherness but uh, that sacrificial element uh, was very touching and that also introduced me to uh, uh, the the uh, christian love uh, uh, the uh, love that uh, 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 christ embody and uh, that was very fascinating uh, when i completed my master uh, graduation i was uh, trying to get into masters i did my uh, bachelor's in uh, biology zoology was my major uh, i did not have sufficient score to get a msc uh, d uh, 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 I mean, admission. Uh, I was a little uh, disappointed, and uh, that time my sister told me. My sister was a, uh, she is an advocate, and she was in Madurai. Uh, she said, "Madurai Kamra University offers a MSc program in peacemaking, and uh, the MSc degree appealed, and I went and joined." and <laughs> there was a professor j prakasham who introduced me to the realm of uh, peace studies and um, conflict studies i have been uh, ever grateful to him he is no more 
but he was uh, a pivotal force in madurai uh, uh, gandhi an academy for long years he produced quite a lot of uh, good campaigners uh, i mean you may know the national gandhi museum director annamalai uh, and uh, like uh, him there were scores of people he produced such a wonderful professor uh, uh, when i uh, went to the department i saw a new world of heroism uh, i mean he was a great uh, orator uh, in tamil and english he would speak so fluently and with a, such a, a global perspective but uh, when we organize uh, the conference and all uh, people would come in uh, hundreds to listen to him and uh, the people whom he invited and uh, in the preparation he would do everything himself along with his colleagues along with his uh, student colleagues uh, i mean uh, putting the chairs in order and uh, uh, bringing water everything he would do i saw there is a heroism in such a uh, act i mean you can be humble and that is exalting that i never knew and uh, then uh, uh, he also introduced me to gandhi because that program peace making was offered in the department of gandhian studies and <clears throat> ramalinger philosophy uh, gandhi was introduced i was very skeptical because uh, as as you understand uh, Uh, ahimsa uh, was uh, introduced to the youngsters in the literal sense and in the very passive sense and the youth have uh, a kind of uh, natural uh, skepticism towards ahimsa it is a passive force uh, but he said uh, you should go to varda and stay uh, for uh, for some time to understand this idea and uh, uh, after my uh, post graduation i moved to uh, varda i joined uh, institute of gandhian studies then uh, ravindra verma ji another great soul uh, was the director there and uh, then i i understood that uh, ahimsa is a superior force uh, in varda uh, the i i mean uh, like martin luther king said that uh, i uh, understood uh, 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 the the idea of love from christ but uh, operational methodology for that from gandhi that is very very true it's a uh, i mean honestly self realized statement uh, gandhi gave uh, a operational methodology for the christian love uh, and uh, there is so much to learn uh, if christians would like to see Uh, uh, the mission of christ accomplished then they should uh, read gandhi and uh, uh, learn the art of translating that love into systemic structural uh, program uh, only gandhi did it in uh, long years and uh, varda unfolded that methodology before me so clearly and uh, i uh, i thought Uh, i can be a better christian by taking up this uh, uh, methodology uh, from that day my parents disowned me for uh, getting uh, disarrayed <laughs> they thought that i digressed <laughs> oh it is a religious yes. sense they felt you digressed <laughs> yes <laughs> so yeah, but uh, now for many years uh, Uh, uh-huh. you have been uh, teaching and uh, peace studies and conflict resolution through an approach you call dialogue of life can you uh, describe what this is and also you know what according to you are the causes of violence because unless we understand the causes of violence um we will not be able to fully understand how it is possible to dissolve gandhian nonviolence calls for a holistic understanding you know 
Gandhi was a staunch believer of non-dualism. Uh, uh, Advaitam, he said, I am an Advaitam uh, uh, proponent and uh, I believe in Advaitam. Uh, there is uh, all encompassing oneness. It is a, it is a, a profound realization. Uh, if we uh, today try to understand it uh, in the logical, empirical, uh, pragmatic sense, uh, we have a lot of scientific uh, evidences to prove that uh, there is an all-encompassing oneness. Our, uh, we are both uh, individual, which is an uh, entity and uh, a, a very distinct reality, uh, are also a uh, society, a ecosystem at the same time, which is another uh, concrete reality. So we are in multiple reality uh, situation. Uh, we are not unable to com complement these multiple realities at the same time. Either we are individual or we are society or we are ecosystem in compartments. And that is the, the, the challenge. Uh, that uh, non-dualism helps us uh, uh, look at uh, uh, harmony between people uh, or peace in the society in a different uh, way. Uh, in a different way. Uh, uh, if we want to have a harmony among diversity, we need to get into uh, a, a dialogic mode. And the dialogic mode is not uh, a, a tool, but uh, yeah, attitude. Uh, it is an attitude. Uh, uh, when we say uh, interreligious dialogue, we set an occasion uh, to do certain, uh, I mean, standard practices. We invite people, and uh, I mean that has its own merit. Uh, it it has a lot of demonstrative value. Uh, uh, people. Uh, I learn from seeing, <clears throat> but uh, that is symbolic. <coughs> that is symbolic. Uh, uh, plurality is a reality that has to come into our core belief, and uh, uh, that will help us understand that. Uh, uh, in the non-dualistic sense, the other person is uh, not actually the other person. The extension of my own experience, my own life, that kind of a, a belief uh, can be brought about. And uh, uh, when that kind of belief is, then our life becomes one continuous dialogue. Uh, on every occasion, we get a golden opportunity to build a relationship, strengthen bonding, and uh, uh, converse with others so that we cohesively uh, pursue our common destiny. That is a possibility. So uh, we, uh, when I was in Nagpur uh, uh, as the director of India Peace Centre, uh, I had the opportunity to we initiate a lot of uh, dialogue uh, uh, program. And uh, I mean, it unfolded. Uh, I did not uh, sit and uh, uh, design a program. Uh, we had eight uh, fold methodology of dialogue uh, in which uh, the last one was uh, dialogue of life. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, we, we say that uh, Hindu, Muslim, Christians, Buddhists, Parsis, Jains, uh, uh, all they, sh they all should come together, understand each other. Uh, uh, when will it happen? How will it happen to a common person? Uh, life gives us opportunity. When I go to market uh, uh, and uh, buy vegetable, uh, the the life gives us an opportunity to connect with a person uh, socially, soulfully. But we just uh, relegate that opportunity to an uh, economic engagement and uh, leave it at that. We miss the opportunity. A small smile 
at that uh, person would evoke counter smile then the dialogue starts mm. uh, the next time that person would smile at us because there is a familiarity mm. i mean uh, if a uh, driver uh, yeah uh, fellow passengers or uh, bystanders uh, innumerable op- occasions come uh, across our life every day a small smile for that we need to uh, create a new uh, perspective about life that a non dualistic perspective the other person is primary mm-hmm. as primary as me that uh, that is part of the truth realization that has to come i mean uh, this is not very metaphysical it is very very uh, social pragmatic down to earth uh, interpretation that we draw yeah. from gandhi when we put it before the young generation they they take it uh, 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 wholehearted hmm. and uh, uh, that is what we say dialogue of life when i talk to students i always tell because of you uh, i get my identity and uh, you are the primary to me yeah but and uh, but john yes. surely you have encountered people who don't accept the non duality who might say that no i and i alone are primary uh, am primary and everybody else has to uh, you know fit into whatever is uh, my perspective surely you have encountered this approach also so how does this get resolved in the dialogue of life uh, uh framing or mindset yeah. we cannot say that uh, 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 non dualism is a primary condition for peace we cannot say that uh, in dualism also uh, there is a scope for salvation or co- communal peace there is but then uh, when i think uh, uh, i for myself mm. then i have to know how i can be uh, the best myself ah Uh, at least i have to go there i cannot be uh, complacent about everything mediocre or about everything and uh, uh, lose uh, the uh, opportunity to exercise my reason uh, i shouldn't do that a yeah, yeah, human being uh, is a intelligent being uh, uh, potentially and uh, that calls us for uh, uh, exercising our reason towards betterment yeah if i think yeah so there is a way uh, we can tell uh, if you are self self centric be a perfect self centric yeah so there is a salvation through microcosmic approach also yeah uh, which uh, our philosophies uh, subscribe so john can you recall a specific incident or a specific uh, workshop in which this dialogue of life approach uh, you know gave great uh, outcomes uh, both a, a success and also i mean perhaps an incident in which you faced great difficulty and you know the conflict proved to be um, what shall i say more tenacious Uh, i mean uh, uh, i cannot uh, give you a very dramatic uh, occasion to no no it does not have to be dramatic in fact i feel uh, uh, constantly looking for drama is also you know one of the enemies of non violence uh, yeah i mean it, it so casually unfolded i mean uh, when i was in nagpur uh, nagpur gave me a lot of uh, uh, occasion for such experiences Uh, we constantly uh, were in uh, the pursuit of these dialogic exercises uh, and uh, the result was phenomenal <clears throat> uh, two ex- uh, two experiences i can share one uh, uh, we had a colleague uh, suresh kairna probably you also know him uh, suresh I kairna i do uh, uh, he is a very good uh, uh, person of dialogue and uh, uh, on religious matter we know we are hypersensitive we are uh, uh, very uh, intolerant when uh, criticism comes from other quarters uh, or uh, that is the opinion we have uh, but uh, 
that is a myth. Uh, when uh, uh, criticism comes from honest people, people are ready to listen. Uh, uh, our criticism shouldn't have a vested interest. Uh, uh, only to put the other person down or to uh, have an advantage uh, for oneself. If that is uh, uh, objective uh, behind our criticism, we, that, uh, uh, that vested interest is quite evident in our talk. People can very easily read it. And people don't uh, recognize such criticism because uh, the, the criticism doesn't have any merit social merit. And uh, Suresh Kerna, uh, I mean, keeps going to uh, people and connect with them honestly and uh, uh, people, uh, he, um, it, it is not empathy, we have to say, I mean, he gels with people as if they are our own people. And uh, he goes to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, religious uh, platforms and criticize them for all their wrongs so openly and they quietly sit and listen to him and call him again. You come and talk to us. I mean, uh, that shows that uh, 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 when we get into honest, uh, uh, engage, honestly engage in relating with people, being one with them, uh, there is so much to uh, uh, build uh, not only relation but also perspectives. People accept, yes, we are wrong, we should do this. And uh, on critical situation, he, uh, I mean, uh, there were potential right like situation, he doused it by bringing sense to uh, people who were sensitive, uh, reactionary. Such thing is possible. And uh, 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 we were very enthusiastic to connect it at the national level. And uh, uh, on one occasion, we had a uh, uh, beyond uh, uh, dialogue or uh, uh, there, there were uh, conferences we organized which was captioned as beyond dialogue and there was another conference uh, uh, building peace these two conferences uh, when we had we thought how are we going to make it really uh, useful to society then we thought, uh, why not we invite two uh, uh, parties which were in loggerhead for a long period of time. And we decided that we would invite uh, Kashmiri Pandits and uh, 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 Huriyat Conference. Panul Kashmir and the Huriyat Conference, we invited in uh, uh, 2006. Uh, I mean, from 1991-92, you know the situation. Uh, the Kashmiri Pandits were uh, evicted and uh, they say, stayed in Jammu. And uh, that was uh, a harrowing experience for them. They couldn't uh, uh, forgive the people who orchestrated such eviction. Uh, and they put uh, uh, the blame largely on uh, the Muslim neighborhood. Uh, which they cherished for generations, uh, and uh, uh, they never the Panun Kashmir never met once uh, after ninety two any leaders of Kashmiri Muslims, uh, and uh, for the first time uh, the Panun Kashmir leaders and the Kashmiri Muslims, particularly Huriyat Conference, uh, Mirwais uh, Umar Faruqi faction, they came together. Three people from that side, three people from this side, they came. And uh, uh, we saw how caustically they were arguing with each other. But uh, uh, after the session is over, they came out and they hugged each other and they, uh, they shared all their nostalgic experience about how they enjoyed living uh, in neighborhoods, uh, how they continue to cherish that memory, how they continue to cherish they left a uh, few interpersonal relationships they continue to have. And then we, we, we uh, suggested why not we continue this dialogue by uh, organizing a, a revisit to our uh, neighborhood. And we took a delegation from 
with jammu kashmiri pandit families to their native village uh, some of them went after almost uh, seven, 16 17 years to their village and when they saw their uh, erstwhile neighbors and uh, uh, childhood friends they were in tears i mean they say our problem is not personal uh, it is political uh, together we uh, made it happen uh, against our own will uh, this should be reverted and uh, that was a uh, ma yeah. we need a political will to solve kashmiri problem uh, but uh, social engineering is even now possible uh, even now possible uh, and uh, uh, we had a series of follow up uh, uh, dialogue engagement we had at least uh, uh, four more sittings but uh, uh, we couldn't uh, uh, have a breakthrough because the problem is lying in political will yeah. i mean individually we are uh, happy to be with one another but uh, uh, collectively we have a kind of uh, i would like to put it as uh, a personal uh, uh, interpersonal uh, will for peace is evident but uh, there is a lacking of collective will yeah uh, concrete love abstract hatred uh, is evident in their uh, that's very well put yeah yeah so i read in uh, one of your articles that uh, you know and i'm quoting you the secret of bharat's long uninterrupted civilization is it a, that it has always adopted dialectic complementary ways of living amidst apparent incongruity within its fold of ethno lingual communities and you say a viable solution to the present problem is quite feasible if we appreciate the precept of nature under which life is ever co-determined by the pairs of binary opposites, even when they appear between them poles apart. What this means, you, you write, what this means is that what is acceptable and unacceptable in terms of our traditions is not cast in stone. Now, how can this help us to overcome what you, as you have so precisely said, the political dimension that, you know, uh, we know that at the people to people level, the conflicts are resolvable. And yet there seems to be a kind of macro political phenomenon that is not allowing that to happen. So, can that at all be tackled or are we doomed to be kind of subservient to it? Uh, I mean, because I took uh, Kashmir uh, uh, incident, uh, from that context only we can deliberate. There is a possibility. Uh, we are not only individuals, we are a nation. Uh, nation is a larger responsibility. Uh, nation is not uh, uh, a responsibility of the uh, power dispensation. It is the responsibility of every individual. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> it is like uh, we, through a, a long journey of civilization, uh, grew to be yeah, more and more sophisticated human beings, even as individuals. Uh, and uh, in that sophistication, uh, we need lots of goods and services uh, that make our life sophisticated. So we built a larger and larger team to uh, give us that goods and services, tools and techniques. Uh, uh, in that process, uh, we should have uh, allowed our perspective also to evolve to understand the larger team we are part of. Unfortunately, we did not do. While we materially expanded the scope of our sophistication, we perspectively did not expand. 
we are still that uh, myopic individual playing a global game playing a national game uh, that gap is causing all the problem all the problem uh, uh, today uh, uh, i am a, a nation i am not part of a nation uh, i am not a child of mother india i am mother india uh, i should think as if mother india thinks then only i can play the game of uh, a nation or a, a citizen of a nation uh, uh, but uh, i think like uh, uh, an individual and try to uh, respond to national uh, challenges uh, individual perspective for a national challenge is an ana is anachronism or anathema sorry it's an anathema uh, we cannot uh, go Uh, with that approach uh, our uh, that the time and context calls for reperceiving ourselves uh, in fact uh, thinking like mother india is also not sufficient in the context of nation it is okay but uh, we have to think like ecosystem i am ecosystem uh, uh, when i eat when i drink i drink as individual i eat as an individual i sleep as an individual but uh, how do i perceive that act should be uh, from the perspective of a ecosystem i should think like an ecosystem and act as an individual like uh, vinoba said yeah think globally yeah. that is a very necessary because we have already come into a global uh, uh, stadium to yeah. play an international game <laughs> but i cannot have gully cricket uh, perspective that's true but at the same time Uh, there is this mystery, or to me, a peop. At least I still find it a mystery that even in an age where we are able to communicate with so many more people, uh, and we have the opportunity to directly or through such technology, uh, you know, listen to each other, then why is the phenomenon of hatred growing, and how can we overcome it? So, uh, uh, I think uh, there is a uh, problem in the uh, format in which we try to be good. I think. Uh, I mean, I talk. Uh, I uh, refer to the uh, I mean, denomination my parents belong to. They were very parochial. but within their parochialism they were really very good <laughs> they were yeah. very good uh, yeah but uh, they were out of context so we say that they are not uh, yeah. uh, a workable model yeah uh, now we have to recognize the goodness of the other person and then say what is the limitation if we say the person has lot of limitation so the person is wrong then we lose the opportunity to build a, a larger uh community yeah uh, for this we need to get into different uh, mode of uh, emotion uh, we are very patriotic people because the long uh, struggle for independence gave us the the fervor patriotic fervor but i uh, in my uh, uh, humble understanding patriotism is an antagonistic emotion mm. uh, it is essential emotion uh, it it works in a uh, uh, i mean a hostile situation in a kind of uh, oppressive situation uh, it helps us uh, uh, regroup our energy uh, to fight against uh, the oddities mm. uh, and it was a very essential patriotic emotion is essential Uh, i we uh, we prepare an army to fight against but once we got into independence this patriotism should have been uh, geared up into nationalism nationalism is a positive energy where uh, the same emotion of love will not get in, get into antagonistic uh, expression but uh, very constructive expressions patriotism yeah. should be graduated into nationalism we did not 
we even now think patriotism uh, is an essential emotion and uh, how will i show uh, with all aggressive expression against possibly enemies when yeah. we don't find enemies we create enemies yeah so we uh, invent enemies that re reminds me that i you have mentioned in the past that during your time in nagpur you did mm -hmm. also engage in dialogue with the uh, workers and the leadership of the rss how did mm -hmm. this unfold i mean would you anything from those experiences that you can share in this context yes again uh, we we connected with a lot of uh, uh, people we decided that uh, a dialogue has to be uh, all inclusive because diversity is a reality uh, then uh, 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 gandhi's that uh, perspective uh, human beings essentially good uh, gave us <clears throat> the essential driving force to see the goodness of others uh, rss people are very very good people in their parochial sense <clears throat> uh, their discipline their uh, loyalty dedication sacrifice uh, for people whom they think are theirs is phenomenal uh, i mean it is positive energy only uh, uh, their uh, uh, circumference has to be expanded but that is the only thing so we decided we will connect with and uh, uh, when we uh, organized the programs we decided all our program will be a, a dialogic program uh, i mean we need to bring uh, diverse people for uh, meeting each other uh, we cannot do it all the time on the religious front we had ecological program we had disarmament program we consciously invite all walks of people from all walks of life uh, right wing people left wing people we, i mean nagpur has got lot of uh, communities then it you know it is a dalit uh, uh, fort uh, diksha bhumi and all uh, we have lot of dalit scholars we invited all of them see <clears throat> while they discuss on some uh, uh, common concern eco ecological issue uh, we get to hear a uh, very uh, sensible uh, uh, ideas coming from people who we think are not belonging to us when a rss person talks about ecosystem it appeals to everybody because it is common concern so that creates a yeah i mean that corrects the perspective of the others that uh, there are some areas of commonality with people who are others uh, yeah. I, i agree with you and uh, uh, after the program they come for a cup of tea and they, they say i really appreciate your uh, point when you said uh, on disarmament or ecosystem or uh, human rights gender transgender uh, and uh, when they start appreciating each other for the merit uh, dialogue starts yeah relationship begins so are you hopeful that in the medium to long term these methodologies will somehow um uh, you know uh see us to the other shore i mean if if you think of indian society can can you yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there is a door sure 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 uh -huh. okay okay uh, please continue my dot uh, uh that i was saying that Uh, do these experiences give you the hope and the faith that in the medium to long term indian society will overcome the conflicts that currently haunt it certainly certainly it will overcome because <clears throat> the journey uh, gives us the hope uh, i mean uh, uh, the journey the journey gives uh, us the hope yes yes uh, you see it's just uh, 80 years before uh, uh, france and uh, germany fought like bitter enemies they were worse enemies than india and pakistan yeah worse enemies now you see it is the compulsion of the time that we grow uh, uh, it is uh, a new challenge that we uh, live up to uh, gradually 
uh, united nations is another hope who thought that we will have a global body that will uh, 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 have a common concern cutting across the boundaries and hues and uh, colors uh, we may say un is very weak at all the very fact that un is there is the hope uh, i mean yeah. 70 years is nothing in the journey of human civilization that is true uh, that we is are constructing yeah and uh, Uh, all the struggle that we see mm. is a transitional struggle uh, uh, we never thought uh, uh, india with uh, 575 uh, 65 princely states would be one union mm. uh, uh, 150 years we never thought it would happen yeah i mean we have to go to that context to understand the uh, enormity or the near impossibility of bringing all these rajas together to have one nation it was near impossibility we matured to accept the otherness i mean they fought like uh, uh, bitter enemies uh, i mean uh, territorial agenda was their primary uh, agenda uh, but uh, today we are one nation uh, we have uh, regional cooperations or uh, global cooperation for economy politics uh, social cultural Uh, platform i mean uh, agendas it is a great scope uh, i mean we are clueless uh, how to behave in the new situation and uh, we will understand how to behave we are constantly building systems and structure to regulate uh, human uh, uh, misconduct or erroneous conduct and uh, we will eventually become global in principle it is reminds me of course you know there have been many great souls here on this subcontinent in the last 150 years who have uh, uh, with great confidence um, shown that we are on a path of upward evolution so in closing what advice would you give to young people see i know you work closely with young people as a teacher Uh, but unfortunately all the young people of this country may not come in direct contact with you um so what is your advice to them of of some specific things you know that they can do in their own life and i say this in the context that many young people whom i meet are in principle they think non violence is a very beautiful idea but they don't think it's workable they don't think it's practical so uh, in closing uh, what advice would you give to such young people yeah. say ahimsa is a very sophisticated tool uh, it is very sharp it can cut uh, so badly uh, and uh, if we under, if we give them how sophisticated ahimsa is i mean it can uh, uh, pierce through a uh, uh, rock hard uh, heart also uh, that is what we saw in our freedom struggle britishers could be convinced uh, that uh, they have to adopt to the parliamentarian uh, behavior even in public even in every locality they deal with people uh, that is uh, the power of non violence uh, they had be Uh, adopted a violent uh, struggle as the primary uh, course for freedom uh, probably we would have suffered uh, yeah, i mean uh, huge loss of life and uh, we would have got into a grave mess because yeah. uh, if we were violent we would have uh, britishers would have been violent they would have uh, got into uh, antagonistic mode they would have probably let the rajas and the princely states to have their will prevail uh, and uh, uh, the freedom struggle was recognized as people struggle and democracy unfolded primarily because of non violence and this sophisticated tool uh, has to be introduced to the new generation in all its uh, sophistication that will take time Uh, but uh, it is not uh, improbable what we need to tell the new generation is that uh, uh, we, 
our life is uh, a social life. It is not individual life uh, that we need to recognize. Uh, being social is very, very uh, essential, primary condition. How are we going to be social? How are we going to be inclusive? That we need to uh, explore. This simple idea, if we leave in the heart of the uh, young generation, it will work. And uh, wherever possible, we have to explain how sophisticated nonviolence, how superior nonviolent methodologies. Nonviolence is just uh, in, in, the, in the present sense is optimization. Optimization is nonviolence. You don't over, you don't under, uh, you do uh, uh, as it is required. Uh, that optimization is a very uh, effective scientific way of telling uh, what is nonviolence. Mm. Uh, uh, and uh, so if you do that, then how the generation can you will can you think of one or two sort of sadhanas that young people can adopt in you know to realize this to to practically action this this uh, insight this this uh, principle. Yes, uh, uh, I mean. Uh, it, uh, I said about uh, optimization. Uh, it, they they know that it is not. Uh, 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 I mean, out of their mind, uh, it is not uh, altogether a new perspective. Uh, I mean, when they buy a bike, uh, they the uh, garage fellow tell that you ride the bike at an optimum speed to get maximum gain. Mm. highest speed is not giving you highest utility. Ah. There is a diminishing return. Uh, 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 in, uh, if you want to have the best health, you, you have to eat, but don't overeat. Overeating will have diminishing return. So yeah. anything overdone has a diminishing return. The the idea of aparigraha is not zero position. It is optimum possession. Optimum right. point is zero point. Yeah. Beyond yeah. which becomes uh, possessor, possession. Right. That is uh, overdoing is possession. Very this well. Idea, uh, this idea is quite understandable. Wherever is. we give this idea to students, they take it. Yes. Uh, then they can... Uh, uh, and extend it. Yeah, they uh, work optimum with it. utilization of water, optimum utilization of time, optimum sleeping, yeah, uh, yeah. optimum watching social media. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Correct. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you. And uh, thank you so much.